Hello students, once again, this is video number three with the tips for you to help you construct your bridge. Once again, these are nothing but guidelines. Uh, you may choose other alternative approaches for doing this. Um, you're looking at this point as a, as a possible joint at the bottom of the truss, like this joint down here, the bottom of the truss. Uh, we have five members coming together. Remember we talked about the floor beam to connecting at the bottom of the truss and leaving enough length of the floor beam to be able to be inserted later on like you see in this demonstration. So we left the gap purposely between these members just enough for the floor beam to slide in this opening. So if this was the floor beam with the floor attached to it where my hand would be, then your floor beam would be able to go in this opening between the members. Again, like earlier we demonstrated, you could reinforce this at the end with scrap pieces like that to hold it together better in place. So you construct it dry before putting any glue to make sure the floor beam will be able to fit in there. And then you would cut your gussets like we see in this image. You can choose any shapes you want, but the basic of this gusset allows these two members to come together, these other members to come together. If you notice, if we zoom in, and look at a side view like that, you will see that all the members are flush. If they were not flush, you might have to run the gusset at the bottom side of, of these members. If they're flush, then it might be easier just to do it from the top. So you bring all these members together and once it's done, glue the whole truss is dry, you can actually open it and look from the other side to insert your member. So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna demonstrate how we put the glue and if you, if you look closely uh, at this, yeah, we actually put too much glue. So I'm gonna use my finger to use only what I need. I'm gonna put a little bit on each of these members, like that. And notice also as I do that, we use masking tape to hold it in place. Notice this bottle is about eight ounces, which is half a pound. If you do this right, your whole bridge should be about half a pound to a pound. Uh, so if you put, if you end up using the whole bottle, then you made a very heavy bridge. So in this image in here, we are going to uh, clear up, clean some of this glue that we put too much. And there you go. And then this should look enough. Let me zoom in to show you. There's not a lot in there. Okay, just enough to cover the whole surface. And then enough on the other surface. You got to wet both surfaces. Again, don't put a lot and then put this in place and use whatever technique. You probably push on it by hand for a little bit and it should hold itself. If you put too much glue, it will never dry. It gets trapped and it will never dry and you will never have a strong joint. If you put just enough glue, it will dry perfectly. The thinner the glue, the stronger the joint. Of course, you, gotta, you have to have enough glue covering all surfaces, but not, no excess, just wiping it on the surfaces. Um, the glue will add a lot of weight to your bridge if you're not careful. And weight is a very important part of the judging. It's been about 10 seconds maybe I've been holding this down. If you want, you can also use weights to hold it in place. But if you have used the correct amount of glue, you might not need much weight to hold this in place. Once this is dry and you have done all the joints of your truss, uh, again, you could use the top side like that or the other side. In this case, we use the side facing us to glue it. Then once you're all done, you would actually flip your truss around and then you will see that opening between the members here where my finger is. That's where the actual floor beam is gonna come in and go in that hole once you remove that piece. So that is how you're gonna build your, uh, one way to build your truss members together at those joints. And uh, I wanted to say something about the sizes of the members. The bottom cord members, it's probably a good idea to make them good size because they're gonna transfer the load uh, between the floor beams and the floor and the truss. But if you look at this truss, this is a large member. It's probably because it was in compression, which means it was red in your computer code. This is a small tension member. That means it was blue in your design. And generally the top cord is always large size members, they are compression. Uh, so be careful, so the red members should be large, the blue members can be smaller members, 
and the bottom cord most probably is a good idea to make them larger and the others make them similar to the size of the top cord.